Welcome to Bruce Productions. Hey guys, welcome back to another exciting adventure here on Bruce Productions. Welcome to 2021, and what a good way to start off. We've got one of the greatest, um, oh my God, I cannot explain, ladies and gentlemen. We've got one of the biggest stars of the 80s and the 90s. Mary Cousas joins us, aka Effie from the Acropolis. Now, how's it going? I'm great. How are you, Frankie? Gala, my God, so good to finally yeah. meet you. Oh my goodness, mate. Some of you people... This lady, oh my God, I grew up watching as a kid and what a good way to do it now in 2021 to start her off. But um, Mary, before we'd like to get into the the end of the um, the whole interview, we'd like to take things back from the very beginning, getting to know you, or people that oh. don't may not know who you are, but can you just give, explain to her who you are and what have you done in your life? Okay, so um, I'm a Greek Australian and I was born in Melbourne, in Collingwood actually, and I um, decided after doing the high school plays that I wanted to be an actress. So I went to university and studied acting for three years. Uh, and when I graduated, I was working in a restaurant, uh, as you do when you want to be an actress. And I served by chance Nick Giannopoulos, who had just come in to have something to eat. And he was with another actor and he just graduated from acting school as well. And he said, you look very familiar. And I thought, well, that's a bit tacky. Uh, but he was right. We'd gone to the same primary school, same Greek school. Oh, my God. And he said, what are you doing? And I said, I just graduated from acting school. He said, so did I. So that was the beginning of what ended up being one of my biggest collaborations uh, over the years. Um, uh, we did Wogs Out of Work together. And that was a huge uh, show that launched in the late 80s and ran for three years and toured the country multiple times. Um, and then Acropolis Now was born out of that show. And uh, Acropolis Now was a sitcom that was on Channel 7. Don't worry about me, daddy. I've just got to make you see. You know I've got to miss you. Miss you, miss you. I'll make you. And it ran for five seasons. It did, I think we did like close to 70 episodes. And I played a character in that show which was hugely popular and very impactful, not only for the audience, but for me as well. And her name was Effie. Your mother does not have more toenails. Mine does. You must be really looking forward to all that food on Saturday night after the church. All those cakes, mate. Yeah, and gulurakia, and red, red juicy eggs. All right, so if this is it, this more good luck charm. Effie, she's taken all over the storm and she's still going on for like 30, 30 years still later. Going on. Yeah, and she's my, um, I suppose, my prized possession. I, I feel great affection for Effie because she was the girl, the Collingwood girl in my heart. The, that was the first decade of my life that I loved so much. And then we were thrust into the white middle class and I was devastated. Uh, we moved to Doncaster, which is now a very Greek uh, suburb of Melbourne, but was not back then. Um, so um, I suppose Effie's the love letter to the first 10 years of my life. That's amazing, because uh, thirty, as I mentioned, 30 years on, this character is bigger than ever right now. With some of the new generation, the new Greeks, Italians and wogs, they you don't know, really know the show, but they look at her like, oh, that's, Eff that's Effie. I'm like, well, yeah. the DVD of the series has, is always sold out at JB Hi-Fi. And what's happened is that a lot of uh, WOGs, my generation, um, uh, above and below, have bought them for uh, their kids to watch. Yeah. So um, I do shows and public appearances where little kids can quote Effie monologues back to me that I don't even remember. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, speaking of, like, like, as we all know, Effie is a, a good looking woman. She is like always trying to get herself out there. Pish, well, as, I, as I say, yeah, pop, you know, like polite, just pish posh. Yeah, she's mm -hmm. always like, trying to be the cool girl that obviously is not as cool as she thinks she is. But um, yeah. as, as people may remember from the very first episode we ever saw Effie, she was like a very you know calm woman, you know, just on the side with her mother. Very good Greek girl, obviously. But then as she progressed, she had the, as we all know, the big hair, the attitude. But where did that line come from? Like, Oh, oh my God, has anyone seen my cousin Jim? Like, where did that accent and like that punctuality come from? Has anyone seen my cousin Jim? Jim is here. I lose my cousin here, my cousin Jim is here. I had heard it um, while I was at uni. I, I went to a cafe in Ligon Street, which was pretty pumping back then. And yep. because I sort of 
lost a, a decade of my life in the white suburbs of Melbourne, I wasn't really aware of how much uh, I was missing out on. Um, and so I went to have coffee and I went to the bathroom and I overheard some girls talking with that accent. And uh, I just, you know, I was studying acting at the time and I just thought, what is this? I just loved it. And I stayed in the toilet um, and I was listening to them. And this was the 80s, probably sort of mid 80s at this point, um, 83, 84. And uh, I came out of the bathroom and I saw these girls with their huge hairsprays because in those days, you know, uh, the big hair was really thin. It was very 80s um, with that sort of bad 80s makeup. So cute, dressed up these wild looking lionesses with their big manes. And I just thought I've got to play that character. I've just got to do that. And, and no matter what they said, I found interesting because I love the accent so much. So yeah, that, that was where Epi was born. That's amazing. And she's, I had it like, when you brought it to Nick and Simon and George back then of this character, what do they think of her back then? Well, they knew um, girls like that because they used to be called Maria's back Maria's. then. Oh. Instead of Effie's. So if someone was really woggy and one of those sort of girls, they'd call them Maria's. Oh, there's another Maria. Um, <laughs> so it was, a, it was a, a familiar image to a lot of people. And I think that's what the audience really took to because when Effie walked out onto the set of Acropolis Now, they just saw the image. And then when they heard the accent, they knew exactly who Effie was. That's very, that's just really, yeah, because I, I remember speaking to George, I think last year we did a video together and he said that the Aquapolis Now was not even called Aquapolis Now from the very beginning. It was actually meant to be called the Wog Bar, but yeah. due, to, due to London or something like that, they couldn't say it, it was fighting words. So they have to change it to Aquapolis Now. What did you think of, the, yeah. of, that, of that statement? Well, I just think words are, are very powerful, you know, and uh, words mean different things to different people. And it was a harsh word for us. That's true. Um, you know, it was a brutalizing word. Um, I remember when I was waitressing uh, one night in Brunswick Street, Fitzroy, after I moved from the St Kilda restaurant where I'd served Nick. Uh, it was a very bohemian, cool place. And I was serving these hipsters and uh, one of them called me a wog. And it just came out of nowhere. And, you know, I was wearing my dreadlocks back then. I had, you know, I was very university, very sort of urban and cutting edge. And I remember going behind the counter and, and sort of bending down to where the coffee machine was and just bursting into tears. And I worked with this awesome guy who was this Croatian guy. And he was pretty tough, you know. And he said, you know, we were super close. And he said, what's up? And I said, the guy on table 12 just said this to me. And it hurt so much um, because I just felt like it was, it, it was just such a weapon. So I suppose we took hold of the arms and um, we took that word and thankfully through a very accidentally commercial product with Wogs Out of Work first and foremost, we're able to disarm that a little bit and to bring some affection to it and detoxify that word. But in London still, in the UK, the word is very, very full on and not, not spoken, you know, without understanding the power that that, that wields, yeah. Completely understandable for most people that don't know that much of the word wog and how that's, you know, impacted us wogs in, in a way, I should say. But for you guys back then, it was actually a very tough word, very insulting, as I can understand from when my grandparents came to this country, straight away. Go back yeah. to go back to where you became from. I'm like, there was a saying though, my my boy, God bless him and be on his grave. He always used to say the way they used to call him wogs. He always used to say, um, they used to, he, the stories he used to say, ah, uh, they call me wog. But when they come to our fish and chip shop, they lick their fingers. Nah, nah, nah. And that's when yeah. things start. <laughs> That is the one thing you get out of the stories from the from like us younger wogs of here. Look, we were really lucky, you know, particularly the Greeks and a lot of European cultures. They've been around for so long; they have a very strong sense of who they are. Exactly. So you know, there's no self esteem issues around a lot of those cultures. So I, I felt the same. They were they were wounded, like, and you would be, but in the next breath, they would be they would be reminded of who they are internally. And I think that's what Effie carried so successfully throughout these last three decades is that she knows exactly who she is. She makes no apologies for who she is. And whether I'm on the same stage as the prime minister or a big rock star or um, just, you know, a legend from the suburbs, 
Effie feels like she belongs. And and I think that that's I think that's what the audience really love ingesting is that it just um, makes that point back to them and it makes them feel you know stronger and, and yeah, exactly. uh, unafraid and yeah unapologetic about who they are. Yeah, I remember from one of the episodes. Uh, what was it? The oh, the waiter episode from season two when when the boys no season two or three when when the boys from the waiter re, you rejected her saying up you cannot be a waiter is you're not a man then all of a sudden she show, steps in tries to stand up what she is and then at the end of it she became a good waiter I should say <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about good oh you never know though hey she, yeah. hey, she might get a large tip for the restaurant you never know <laughs> yeah that, that she would hope for that she'd aspire to yeah and i'm surprised like was it 1991 or two the show ended um from the network yeah yeah and 30 years later on like i'm surprised that channel well Crawford studios were they channel nine or channel seven back no, then? they were their own production company but the show oh, was on channel seven. Oh, channel seven so yeah. Anyway, Channel 7, I'm surprised they for the 30th anniversary, they didn't do nothing to celebrate the magnificent show that what it is today. Luckily here yeah, for the product. You know what? It's a high, it's a big risk. Sex in the city is about to go again. Oh, and good. you know, and that's a hugely popular show, obviously, around the world. And and even as a fan, you're going, Oh, maybe they should have just left it alone. I don't know. Yeah. And I feel the same about Acropolis. Like, I'm in no hurry to. You know, I just, I don't think that you can underestimate what it meant to people at the time exactly. and the impact that it made on this country and to so many people that live in this country, whether you're a wog or not. I think if you're in a, you know, in a position where you're in a minority, whether it would be sexually or, you know, economically or culturally, you felt like, you know, you were lifted up by that show and the attitude of those characters, Um but I don't know about revisiting. You know, I think it, it. You know, it was great, but I don't know whether we need to go back to that. Exactly. But like, they should have just celebrated the the anniversary of it. I, t- I should say, from my opinion, because luckily we did here on Bruce Productions, we did a podcast relating to the whole thing, just say how it impacted us, and you know, the show would well, leave as it is. But like, you know, the show impacted us wogs, and it was okay to be sure. a wog back then. Totally. But, totally. but now, thirty years on, you and Nick reunited with Sushi Mango doing Star Wogs, and that was amazing. Yes. To the Chinese, I want to say thank you for the two dollar shops. <laughs> I yes. can't believe that. Was it like first time in 25 years you guys were on stage? I know. I don't know where the time goes. It's it's crazy, you know. Uh, it was shocking to me to remember how long it had been since I'd worked with Nick because we did so much together for so many years. But you think you just, I can't be that old, can I? Well, what what happened to those years? Well, I spent a decade almost trying to become a mum. So, you know, there was a decade. Uh, and then I've, um, since the, the initial work with the boys, I went on and did a lot of stuff on my own. That's so true. I, you know, so it was nice to dip back in. And certainly, you know, being on stage with Nick, who, you know, I did my first big stage shows with. And, you know, he's a master on stage. I, I remember doing Wogs Out of Work and just watching his monologues from the wings of the show. How old are you children, Signora? Uh, 19 and 24. Yeah. <laughs> you know, in the backstage and just watching everything he did. And uh, I learned a lot from Nick, you know, and and from a lot of the men that I worked with in my career. I don't know, I love men. So for me, um, you know, I, I feel seen by them. I know there's a lot happening in the world at the moment and, and so it should because I don't think a lot of women are in the lucky position that I've been in to have successful, uh, honest, uh, equal relationships with men in the workplace or anywhere for that matter. Um, I had a very close relationship with my dad. I love my brother to death. Some of my besties are boys. Um, I love working with men. And so for me to be in that company, you know, I, I certainly feel like um, I can do some awesome work in, in that environment. And I have done. And it was nice to go back to it, you know. But I, I can imagine you guys nailed the whole, the whole weekend, to be honest with you. You guys nailed the, the old wogs, took it better than new wogs now. It's amazing. Hey, you guys yeah, up. look, you know, everything we do, we put a lot of heart into. And, you know, we know our fans are an elite group of dedicated and they're a massive group. They're not niche anymore. Exactly. You know, my audiences are, yes, there's a lot of Greeks, but there's a lot of Maltese, Italian, Yugoslavian, 
uh, Muslim, gays, you know, a lot of Aussies. So that's the power of television. If they can see what you do on television or they can access it via the DVDs or, or come to one stage show, you can guarantee they're going to come to all the rest. That is wonderful. So before we end and before we go, we have another, you have another exciting announcement. Effie is back on the road once again, starting off in Adelaide at the Adelaide Fringe Festival, followed by some shows in Sydney, um, Melbourne and Brisbane, I believe as well. We're about to announce Melbourne and Brisbane as well. So, and, you know, we're adding dates all the time to this tour. The show is called Hello, Good Thanks, Better Out Than In. <laughs> And you know what? Uh, a lot of our shows are, are pretty politicised. You know, we, we cover it in a capsule of comedy, but essentially there's something more to say than just have a laugh. You know, we reflect the times and the attitudes of, of what we've lived through and what we still see. And the common thing that we've all shared now in this last year has been Corona and, you know, the whole COVID thing, the lockdown thing. And so... Um, I think, um, you know, this is um, an issue that we all need to sort of expel uh, via laughter together. So uh, Effie's take on the whole thing is hilarious and I cannot wait to be back in front of crowds again and to entertain people. And for anyone that's seen my last, you know, three or four shows that I've been doing in the last decade, they know that it is very live. Uh, the first half of the show is scripted and the second half is completely improvised and uh, that's when it gets super exciting and and I have um, crowds that I adore and I see them as stars and they become part of the show willingly I don't know why they put up their hands and get involved but they do and it is as live as live can get so please come and see the show um, you can find out all about the tour by going to maryandeffie.com and can't wait to entertain you no worries. If you guys didn't say hear that, just go on mary.com, um, effie.com.au. Mary oh, Ma sorry. And then if you're in Adelaide as well, go on the AdelaideFringe.com. Yeah. You get your tickets for three nights only in March 16th to the 18th of March. Am I correct? No, it's 18th to the 20th. Anyway, sorry? it's 18, no. 19, 20. Sorry about that. 18th to the 20th in the LA French Trail, in the Garden on Earthly Delight. So go get them. You do not want to miss this show. Well, Effie, thank, oh, Mary, I should say, thank you so much for an entertaining day. And um, we hope to see you very soon with some more laughters and more comic sketches coming up very soon. And don't forget to go on BruceProductions.com, on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Subscribe as well, ladies and gentlemen. Until next time, this is Bruce Productions, and we are out. If you'd like to check more videos here on Briz Productions, why not check some of the videos that are currently right here, right now? Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share the videos with any of your mates in particular. I'm Briz, and see you next time.